So what happened during the transgressive system tract? So during the transgressive system tract, it's really important to know on an isolated platform where the windward side of the island is and where the leeward side of the island is. Windward is the side that faces the prevailing wind direction, which also means facing the prevailing wave direction. And you can see that we're developing during the TST an asymmetry here on this isolated system. And this asymmetry comes from the fact that in the windward side, we have the wave crashing on the island, clearing sediments away to the back of the island. That gives you nice, clean waters where reefs will preferentially grow. So reefs will tend to grow more on the windward side. So they will grow on that side and they will protect the back of the island. And in the very back, in the leeward side, we'll tend to have more sand because it's more turbid and the sediments are moved from the windward side to the leeward margin of the island. So that asymmetry is an important concept for isolated platforms. And of course, as the base level is rising, we tend to cover the, pre the previous low stand deposits. And here, I, I think this is a, an amazing image personally, but you see a former sinkhole that dates from the previous low stand that was lower than, than uh, sea level is today. And it's now basically being reflooded. So now there's water on top of it. And what's really cool is that this sinkhole acts as a trap for sediment. So you see the prevailing wind current here comes from the right to the left. And on the right side of the sinkhole, there is just sand, there is no reef. But on the left side of the sinkhole, you have seagrass meadows and you also have some reef that starts to develop because the sinkhole acts as a trap for sediments, as you can see on the right image here, the bathymetry um, image. And this is really an, a, a good illustration of how on the small scale, this whole thing is about you know three kilometers, the whole image. On a small scale, how these different paleotopography can impact what type of carbonate grows where, because the corals only grow on this side of the sinkhole, thanks to the fact that there is less sediment, so the waters are more clear. And I mentioned that in the leeward side, we tend to have more sandy deposits. So typically, you will have either skeletal sand or you can have ooidal sand. But yes, you will tend to have more of a sand type of deposit. These can be great reservoirs, but it, it's good to know where those um, prevailing wind direction are uh, because that could imply some heterogeneity, but also some asymmetry in where your different deposits um, are. Okay, now what happened during the high stand track? Remember the high stand track is when we have the, the majority of sedimentation on those uh, platform in, in uh, the tea factory. No exception here with isolated platform, of course. And basically the asymmetry that we've seen developing during the TST is becoming even stronger. We have more grain shoals on the leeward side and we have much more better developed reef on the windward side. A good analog for high stand, especially high stand higher than today, is isotopic stage 5 and 5E in particular, where sea level was higher by about 1 to 2 meter compared to today, up to maybe 6 meters at the, at the end of uh, 5E. And the temperatures were about 1 to 2 degrees higher. And if you look at these uh, 5E, there's been some studies done, it's actually a bit of a chilling perspective on what could happen to isolated platform during high stands that are higher than today. So remember we have those grain shoals here in the back and if you look at 5E grain shoal in the Bahamas and in Bermuda, you see those um, first of all, you see a trilogy of deposits and one of the end member of that trilogy is essentially storm deposits. So those big cross stratified um, Aeolian and Oolitic uh, sand, so, so that's uh, calcareous Aeolian sand, um, that basically form dune. And that happens in the lowland during stage 5e, during the re relative sea level um, high. Um, and, and their storm deposit, there's all the evidence for that in the dunes themselves. But if you look at cliffs that are slightly higher, so about 15 meters higher than sea level, what you see is 
evidence for boulders sized cliff uh, rocks being eroded and transported by mega waves. So we have evidence for mega storm during 5e, much, much stronger than what we see today. And here are some photos. By the way, this was all published in a paper by Harty and Tormi in 2017, if you're interested to check it. And you can see those boulders are gigantic and they were all transported by storm away from um, high cliffs. Here's another example. I'll point you to the size of the man here next to the boulder. Look at the size of those boulders. Absolutely gigantic. And if you go towards higher ground, where only the most um, strong storm could come, where you have, for instance, Eolianite deposits, so, that, so you already have a bit of topography. On top of those, you even have evidence for sands being shifted and transported during storms. So the message here is that during stage 5e, which might be a good analog for what awaits us. So, you know, a few meters of sea level higher than today and a couple of degrees uh, of global temperature higher, we have evidence for mega storms that produce those big, uh, those big uh, ripples and, and those uh, boulder transport. And that's not a great news if you're living on an isolated uh, platform. Uh, for instance, if you're a resident in the Bahamas or in the Maldives, this is actually pretty uh, bad news.